I am Justin Gatlin. This is Ready, Set, Go. Welcome back to another episode of Ready, Set, Go with Justin Gatlin and myself, Rodney Green, man. I'm happy to be in the building with our guest, World Athletics, World Silver Medalist, Kyron McMaster. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for What's having that? me on the show, man. Yeah, man. What's yeah, man. man. I want to celebrate you, dog. You know what I mean? Appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. I can't complain about that. Hey, what's going on, man? We just want to talk a little bit about like how you came about, man. I know uh, you train with Gary now, man, and um, we want to shed some light on on your story, and and because I think it's kind of interesting, man. Like where you came from, and like 2016 being a a world junior bronze medalist, mm -hmm. all the way into now, man. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so yeah, like you say, um, 2016, I was a bronze medalist, Jahil. He won that, and then uh, Taylor McLaughlin. Oh, yeah. He got, he oh, got for real? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. got silver. Wow, that's crazy. And then um, 2017, I actually, actually 2016 was the year I actually lose my scholarship at uh, Central Arizona. I wow. A, yeah, they, I cut my scholarship. I had a stress fracture in my lower back. Deemed me not good enough anymore. So you was laid up. Right. And you got the bad news while you was laid up, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. And this was 2016? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> yeah. So I went back home and trained with my um, late coach that passed away. And he was like, we can get you right then. We can go World Juniors. Coach like, Dax. Yeah, Coach Dax. Okay. So we got the medal at World Juniors. And then I think 27, or maybe late 2016 or early 2017, I signed with University of Florida. And then um, I went, which meet at Florida comes first? Is it the Tom Jones invitation? Tom Jones, Tom Jones the second. second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, so what's the first Florida meet? Relays. Florida, Florida Relays. 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 Right, so I went Relays. Florida Relays. I ran 48-8, right? I catch the wave, right? So basically, you, you was already dropping 48s out the hole because usually that's the first track meet of the season. Right, yeah. A lot of people yeah, yeah, usually run. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was a, a PB for me out the gate. I was a PB fastest run ever. I was surprised. I was like, damn. And then, second race, drop our next PB, 48. I was like, damn. You stacking on them. Right, right. <laughs> and it was war lead, too. Yeah. It was war lead, too. Nobody wasn't running no 46s oh, or nothing yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's mid-season running right, right there. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. So then, no, that year, that's when you had, like, Eric Fudge and, like, TJ Holmes and those guys running. Mm -hmm. And Keron Clement was still running. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that year, started to run fast. I went my first demo league that year. Came second to Kieran Clement, ran like 48 or something like that. But then, I think I went Kingston, no, Jamaica Invitational. So that was around May, early May. Right, yeah, okay. right. Yeah. So that's probably before the Diamond League, actually. I ran 47 8. And then that's when I got a uh, contract offer of start coming in. What's you, what's you? Let's back up a little bit, man. Do you understand what that means, dog? That 47 in May is like running 9 7 in May. 100%. That's, 100%. That's, that's, right. 100%. that's crazy. <laughs> which, which is crazy. So before all this 45 seconds stuff right. with the with the with the Vikings started happening right. and all that, we talking back then. Tell us about man when you ran that first 48 in college, what was that like for nah, you? No, that was in college. You was I was college? I was back home training because I signed the, the letter of intent with University of Florida. So you didn't. So even... I was doing online schooling to make sure I have the same credit. So I was still training in the islands. I was in the islands oh, training. I wasn't wow. in the US. Or in the islands training. What type? What type of mindset that take, man? You was with your coach to train. I was just own? having fun, to be honest. For real. So you was just dropping forty eight, just having fun with. Just you. having fun, cause I I had my job back home too. You hold on, hold on, hold on. Was you signed? Did you have a contract? You had a shoe deal at that point in time? Nah, you nah, this before nah. you ran the floor. This was Jeez. before this. So, who was your job back home? I was a truck driver. I had my yeah. own little trucking business. So, the asphalt, we used to pave the asphalt. Oh, for the, for the roads and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, that was me. I could pave, I could pave the shit out of asphalt. Me and my team, <laughs> <laughs> me and my team, we could put on asphalt yeah. any day. So, so you drop an asphalt and then go to practice. My schedule was set up like we would train four thirty the morning, and then take a rest, train again at nine, and then we rest the whole day. Right? Listen, listen. We rest the whole day after that. Eat everything, go back to the track, like around 3 30 or 4 o'clock to do some drills, hold the drills and stuff like that. Six o'clock, me and my team, we walk in till four o'clock in the morning, dropping asphalt on the road. Cause then we don't we don't like to walk in a hot sun. Yeah, yeah. And you're dealing with asphalt, hot temperature. So we walk in 
through the night. And after I finished work, gone straight to the track, take off my boots, everything. Then I'm going to do a workout. How long would you do that for? When I got back home, I just had wanted, I had like the hustle. I like hustling for money. So when you were I used sleeping, to make a lot of money. When you were sleeping though? During the day. <laughs> like you gotta remember, so after, I, I was two, like, after two a days, you was running, you was practicing four thirty a.m. Then you come back and practice again at nine, right? And then you do your drills, so you was constantly basically practicing throughout the day, right? 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 Okay. So, so when, you, when you went home, because this is what I'm trying to figure, like that mindset, bro. You lost your scholarship, yeah. And you said you went home and you was having fun. You dropped forty eight. When <laughs> that's that junk sound crazy. That's like that's what I'm saying. So like I was just having fun with it because my coach he saw a vision. I should have bring a book, you know, because then Justin would have been like, oh, he was mad. He had a book, and I have the book home. He he projected what I could have run. He believed in me on a different level, like yeah, on a level that I couldn't even see myself. He saw your talent. It was like blowing from me. Right. And yeah. I had hard work ethics. Like, you see me paving asphalt and then come to the track. And it was just wasn't me, you know. Like, the same shot put out from the BVI too. Oh, was yeah? Right there with me paving asphalt. And man, shout out to his name, man. Yeah, that's big boy, El Jed. You feel me? That's my <laughs> dog. You check. That's monstrous, dog. Yeah. That's, hey, I got to commend you on that one. Yeah. Like, no, that, that's crazy. The reason why I asked you that, because in this day and time, man, you have so many, so many athletes who believe that stuff's supposed to be handed to them. Right. You know what I mean? You was out there with a job working hard to get to where you at because a lot of people will see your success like the end goal and don't understand the story or the dynamic behind right. it. You know what I mean? Right. So I, that's why I always like to go back and kind of kind of chop and dissect those type right. of stories right. so people right. can understand right. what makes McMaster who he is. You feel right. me? I mean, I've been a hard worker from young. My father pushed me like that from young, from a young age. Uh, from yeah. a young age, you... Construction is is the island, so yeah. I don't know. Grow up this different. Yeah, 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 yeah. You <laughs> grow up this listen, different. Listen, you can grow up real different. I took Justin to the Bahamas one time. Well, he been to the Bahamas several times, but I took him with me. Mm. So he went. And he was chilling with the natives. So I took him to my parents. House. I was like, "Hey, yo, we ain't gonna wear a condition, man. It's a different type." Of heat. He's like, "Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah." You yeah, had yeah, to listen, give him the, the draw down. This man was sitting did. on the couch <laughs> and he passed out like twice, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. That's a story. Grow passed out twice. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I ain't gonna lie. I stepped in the house. I was like, okay, cool. It's a little warm in here. You know what I'm saying? Right. I knew it was warm because when we walked to the front door, the, the front door was already open. <laughs> you know how we do back home? You know how we do. So you yeah. get the knock. You, just, you already walked in the door. Right. And we sat down. And I was like, I'm gonna sit on this side because the sun not coming in, right? Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna sit on the side. Well, I started baking. <laughs> Right? Sweat dropping down my back and everything. I'm just talking to his dad, his mom. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just kind of keep a straight face. You know what I mean? I was like, man, let me get up real quick. I'm going to move over here. I was baking on that side too, man. I think he saw it because like the beads of sweat started rolling down my face. And I just had still had the steel face on. I said, I got to get my dog back to the hotel. <laughs> that Caribbean heat something different, though. Hey, that Caribbean yo, heat something different, though. I feel like I was over the years, too, because even I when, I don't know if it's because I live in AC consistently up here, yeah. no, but when I go home, <laughs> bro, I be baking just like how you see. I be I like, yo, y'all really live like this? <laughs> like, hey, you really live like this for real? Yeah, man, but shoot, let's get, let's get back to it, man. So now you're at Florida, you dropped those times. Right, dropped the times at Florida. Um, most, they're, they're excited. Coach Mouse. Yeah, Coach Mouse. Shout Mouse. out to Coach Mouse. Uh, shout out to Coach Mouse, Coach Welty, the whole Florida crew. Um, they showed you love. Yeah, regardless. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought that I had some bad animosity when I hit them with the, yo, I got off of a contract again for this bird. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but they was like, nah, go do your thing. I yeah. understand. Handle your business. You know? So every time we see each other, dubs up. Is all love. That was good, then. And I respect okay. that till this day. You understand? And I still have a home there if I wanted to. Like, they always tell me, if you ever wanted to come train at Florida, we bump into you. He's good. He's good with his athletes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I've yeah. seen... I think the thing that scared me about it is I watch one of them walkout videos on uh, YouTube mm -hmm. <laughs> where, <laughs> where they can't sit on Jewel reps. I was like, ah, I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so let's but, talk. Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about as you start to climb the ranks. So you now you say you got your contract. Who you signed with? I signed with Puma. Yeah, Puma. Oh. That's what's on his feet, man. Right, That's right, what's on his feet. right. Oh, <laughs> the gate. Same with Puma. So now we got two world champs. 
Which world champs is this? 2017. 2017. This is 2017. Oh, this right? is 2017. 2017. This is 2017. Right? <laughs> London. Yeah. London. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first world champs, right? I'm excited, ready to go. I stepped on the line, on the outside line, right? I won the heat. Won the heat. After I went back to the track, I see my coach sitting down like with a, with a bottle. Look, it's like, what happened, coach? He's like, you stepped on the line. I was like... Oh, so no one even told you why you was out there and you came back to the Warren Bear. The first time you heard it was from your coach. Yeah. That's crazy. And they tried to protest it. And I was like, coach, I step on the outside line. If anything, You're not I run in more, more distance. I ain't impeding nobody. I don't understand. Why, What's why the did, friction yeah. there? You feel me? So I got DQ'd out of that. So I had to watch. That. I had to watch Wahoo win that one. I was like, no disrespect to Wahoo at this point. I was like... I was slice of cheese for me right there. Hey, notice, yeah. notice no, he no said, disrespect. He said to this point, meaning it's coming. It's coming. Right. <laughs> exactly. right, right, right. <laughs> From then, I have a little friction with you right there. Because <laughs> now I watch this man just eat my cake off my yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no disrespect to him. It's just how the game goes. And you know what I mean? So I got my leg back at the Diamond League Finals, though. I beat him at the Diamond League Finals, but it just wasn't enough. So after that, that's the year I met Samba too. And that's when I realized shit. Samba was, from yeah. Samba from, from uh, Qatar. Qatar. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. when I know shit was gonna get real. We we raced in uh Zagreb. And he run, does the brakes off of me. Like, <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I, was like I remember that. That's what he was Samba moving. Was yeah, off right. them, he was dropping off them 46s like. But that was in 2017, though. That, that was 2017 he was nah, doing that. Nah, he, 2019 that was, he started dropping them. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. I think it's yeah, 2018. 18, 18 20, started dropping them. He went on like a maniac that whole season. Yeah, I ain't yes, even yes. like. That season, I was like, what is man trying to prove? Because every race, he's just dropping. The same year I had. 2017 dropping times, but in the 48 region, mm -hmm. and then hit the 47, and then went back to 48, to low 48. Yeah. He did that with 47s, and then hit the 46 9. That race, he ran 46 9, ran 47 5, and I was like, Wahoo was in that race too. He was in that race. Wahoo was in, I was the Viking he was today. Mm -hmm. That was what you see you now is hard work, ethics, and. So I got a question for that. So you watched the birth of Warhol, right? Yeah. So you watched him. How do you feel? Because usually when you have someone who kind of like comes into a, an event and they just kind of just take over, a lot of people become intimidated by that. Did you feel that intimidation as he grew or did you feel like you could see what he is and how you can be able to like race him and beat him? Um, I wasn't intimidated. I would say what it was, I was still having fun with the sport. Oh, okay. that, that was my thing. Well, there was up, sleeping, eat, dreaming, track and field. I was home eating pizza, watching <laughs> something on TV. <laughs> like, I was still having fun with the sport, you know what I mean? Because I didn't, I didn't see the whole track and field mm. would have provided me my future. So at the same time, I still on the side hustling and trying to make my bread and butter. You understand? So 2018, that was Samba year. That was Samba year. And then, 2019, I don't know, Wahoo just came out with a vengeance out of this world. Yeah. And I, my engine was not equipped to run with those boys at that point. I can be real with you. Do you think uh, it was more so of because you was having fun with the sport? Because the way I hear you talk is like you probably was underperforming due to not taking it as serious. There you go. You exactly that. So exactly it's like, that. yeah, I'm having fun. I'm going to go to the Diamond League meet and then I'm going to go dance with these gals down so, here. And then so <laughs> for instance, like even, even like during the season, like 2018, when I went Commonwealth, I would jet skiing on the water. For real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yo, don't tell Puma about that. That ain't in your contract. I, I won, though. I won. I won. <laughs> I won. So you celebrate. You celebrate. Right, 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 right. So I was jet skiing. I was snap, but those boys were walking. You see what I'm saying? But at the same time, I was fresh in a new environment and I was getting a lot of injuries in the, in the, at the same time. I was injury prone when I was at Clemson. Every year at Clemson, I had like two major injuries, like either hip flexor or hamstring injury or something like that. I don't know what the reason behind that, that was, but that's what, it, that's what it was. Yeah. Feel me? I was there for five years. When my coach passed away, I came there in the fall of 2017. And I was with that coach up until 
2022. Yeah. So what? I so left. Yeah, I left in 2022 after the Commonwealth Games. So the passing your coach. How did how did coach coach, coach Dax pass? In a hurricane. Um. You know, it, that's a funny story. You know, because he was a very interesting individual. You know. <laughs> no, for real, for real. I feel like a good backstory coming to that. Right, we, <laughs> I could laugh about it. No, you know. Yeah. Um, so when we was in Zagreb, he wanted me to do our next race, right? And had we did that next race, we wouldn't have been in the islands for the hurricane. Wow. Right. So I was like, man, coach, I just want to go home. Yeah. Just try and go have fun. I just want to go home. I had a long season. Just want to chill out. She's so like, all right, let's go home. So we went home. As we touched down, everybody was like, yo, there's a big hurricane coming. Big hurricane coming. We didn't take the hurricanes. I don't think nobody on the island take the hurricanes. Floridians serious. and Caribbeans, like, no. <laughs> hurricanes are normal for us. Right, I mean? yeah. right, right. Yeah. But then, no, this this the part, no. Like, I think it was like a day, a day out or maybe a day and a half. That hurricane went to a category five. That's when all the eyes will be like, wait, <laughs> this shit serious now. Right. So then, no, my coach called me up. He asked me for duct tape. I was like, what you mean, coach, for duct tape? At that time, yeah, my pops and my friends, them, we going around helping people board up them houses as well. I was like, coach, you know, we could come board up your house. That's, that's like, well, so now, nah, man, I just put duct tape on the window so you don't break and go all over the place and what's not. My coach, I live in a nice little glass house on top. He had a nice uh-huh. little crib. And the story that I heard, the story that I heard, so, don't hold me to it. The story that what was delivered to me is he was upstairs and the glass break and when it break, it like shattered all over him. So him up. Yeah, yeah, so he passed out. And then the winds were crazy. It was like 200 miles per hour winds. And just take him and throw you outside on the house. One of our coaches, Omar Jones, um, lived across the street, saw, saw it happen. So he went outside, picked him up in the hurricane put him in the back of the truck to try to carry him to the hospital. Wow. A tree came down oh, to stop him from going. Like, literally block, blocked him and watch, him, watch the coach die. That's right there. Right there in the, in the truck or whatever the case is. How did that affect you? You know, I never dealt with it. Wow. I never dealt with it on a personal level. I just, like, brushed it to the side and kept it pushing. That's a Caribbean thing. We do, yeah. we do that a lot, bro. Like, I, mean, I think it played played with me in ways that I never understood. But I dealt with it this year. I needed to get that chip off my shoulder. I feel you like, I think for a long time I harbored negative energy like that or energy right. that never really kind of got off my shoulder. I carried a chip. It, it was effective for me, like when it was time for me to race. Mm. I used that same energy right. to make good races, right? Win races, dominate. But then now I started bleeding into my real regular life. There okay? you go. So there then, you yeah, go. it was affecting me. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I, I, it's happened to me a few times too, but I, I found through therapy, man, like I, it helped me kind of navigate, navigate my emotions. You know what I mean? So I always tell people, you know, before a whole big mental health kick, you know, I started realizing a lot of things that I was doing, like I, it was bleeding in my regular life. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I didn't notice it because, you know, uh, shoot, just not even just Caribbean people, just black people feel like we have to be certified crazy to go see a therapist. Right. <laughs> like you have to feel right. like suicidal to be like, right. oh, I need to go to the therapist. I need to and go to not therapist. even then you probably might go. Yeah. Not yeah. even then. I don't know. It's probably something with, with the, the skin color for real. Cause I, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. man well, may that rest in peace, man. Right. You know, we want to definitely yeah. say that, man. Most but definitely. Shoot. Uh, now we're at 2018, 2019. So 2019, um, no, COVID was 2020, right? Yeah, COVID was 2020. What happened in 21? Did you go to the Olympics? What, what was, no, I want to know what you were doing during COVID, dog. Because I know yeah, for us, <laughs> well, we were dying over here, dog. Like, we had nowhere. We, I everyone can't was locked up. I can't speak on that. What you mean you can't speak on that? <laughs> and you was out there riding jet skis. You, you, <laughs> you just told me before the podcast started, hey, man, I'm an open book. Bro. You closed that book quick. I, I didn't go that I show when I come in. <laughs> I can't speak on what I did during COVID at the point. But I was being a responsible athlete. I just didn't sit down on the coach. I um I um was training. I went to the tire shop, um, take a tire, tire rope to it. So I used that sleds 
had a little nice hill. So I was training, doing my little stuff. I didn't want it to be out of shape. And um, that year, Wild Home, I see Wild Home ran that year too. Is mm-hmm. it COVID? Yeah, he ran. I think he ran the 300. Yeah, he ran that single, like one on Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, damn, this nigga, this nigga training. This nigga really walking. <laughs> And he, ran, I, he ran a whole race by himself. Right, a whole race. And then that's when I knew shit was real in the sport. Like, so it dawned on you. Turn right, like, right. Like, that's when I had a realization and I looked myself in the mirror. I was like, Kai, you, you, you have to see yourself as a professional. Athlete. You have to move as a professional. Athlete. You know, you have to really take it serious because these boys out there running. They're not playing. You, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, is, is it 2019? Or 2019, that's when Benjamin ran 47-0, right? Yeah. I was, I was like, dang, this event just getting harder and harder. Because now Samba, Benjamin, Waho, that was the big three that was first created. Then, yeah. That was the big, Samba got injured. And Samba has never recovered to the point where he could deliver that performance consistently. Mm-hmm. That's what the Brazilian came in with later on. But you know... The Brazilian actually won Pan Ams in 2019. I, I, I saw that. I saw him run the Pan Ams in 2019. I say, if this boy get a good coach, he can be problem. So said, so done. <laughs> so, said, so, so said, so done. Um, when uh, I think it was 2021, though, we opened up the season at um, this track meet in LA. I can't remember what the name was. It was me. The Brazilian and Benjamin. Benjamin ran 47.3. I ran 47.5. Santos ran 47.6. At the end of the race, he rejoicing like he just won the race. I said, this boy can be a problem for me, you know. I never beat him after that. I never beat him after that till this year. He just started to. And then, that was the same, yeah, that was 2021. Went Olympics. He dropped 46. That's when I knew again. So you went to the Olympics? Yeah, I came fourth. Came right fourth. 2019, I came fourth in, <clears throat> in World Champs. And We're going to do that roll call real quick. 2016, uh, bronze medal, World Championships under 20, right? Mm-hmm. 2017, uh, over in the World Championships. 20... 2017, I got the Diamond League trophy. 2017, got the Diamond League trophy. 2017, Commonwealth Games. Uh, first place as well. Got the gold. That, that was 2018 for the Commonwealth Games. Oh, 2018. So and I spread also out. the Demo League champion in 2018. And NACAC as well, right? Yeah, you got right? the NACAC. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then CSC as well. Yeah, yep. CSC, yeah. Central American Games. World Championships, like you said, you got fourth at uh, in Doha, Qatar. Mm-hmm. And then fourth again in 2021 for the, uh, the Olympics. The Olympic Games, yeah. And then 2022, things started looking a little different. Commonwealth yeah. got that first. NACAC got that first again. So yeah, you was... You got a pedigree, though. Like, yeah. 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 But here's the sad, the downside to that. My accolades are not really recognized in the professional world. Think about that. As a Caribbean athlete, the only two accolades that really mean something to our Wars sponsor Olympics. is Wars and Olympics. It's true. A European athlete, they have three big accolades. The same wall, Olympics, and the European Champions Championships. Championships. Or European Championship would be considered something like NACAC because we have the Americas in it. Mm-hmm. But you take a gold medal from NACAC and try to give it to a shoe sponsor, they can laugh at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they can say, boy, yeah. what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Carry that back. <laughs> and it's See what I'm saying? NACAC don't have the major sponsors like the World Championships and, uh, and the uh, Olympics. And that's something that we talked about, like, how do we make our sport a lot more bigger? Because a lot of the fans don't understand. They think, oh, uh, track is every four years, like right. every every Olympics, nobody right. doing nothing until the Olympics time. You get those same same <laughs> questions, dog. Uh, the Olympics next year? No, it's every four years, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what you running a mile? Uh, then, I don't run miles, sir. What you running the 40? Don't run 40 yards. Right, the 40, oh, right. And then they be like, um, that boy's still running, um, what's his name? Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis. <laughs> boy, you crazy? You crazy? That boy been retired. <laughs> I remember, and they're going to tell you the most craziest Carl Lewis story ever. <laughs> ever. What's the vibe back at home? Like, now you are being recognized on the world stage. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel the love from back at home? Or is it kind of like still kind of like getting there? 
I felt it from before. Um, again, every accomplishment that I've accomplished since 2017 is the force. So, so you're the pioneer, period. Right. You go. Right. He the goat, right? He the goat. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Everybody say respectfully. Yeah, respectfully. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's the population of the British Virgin Islands? I think about between thirty to thirty-five thousand people. I, I went to a, every football game that happens in America holds more people than on our island. That's that wow. in the BVI. We gotta go there, bro. You but it's there? a vibes though. It's a vibes because it's a different vibes to every other Caribbean country. Because you could have lunch on one island and then on the next island. That's how close it is. And we're right next to the U.S. Virgin Islands as well. So we have St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix. St. Croix in the house. All, yep. all as one. Randy, you know what Croix, I mean? man. All of we VA is one. So it is a vibe. Like, when you go island hopping, I don't think none of you guys have ever been island hopping. You know what I mean? But I, uh, I mean, you know, I'm from the Bahamas. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. even then, no disrespect to Bahamas. But island hopping in Bahamas different from island hopping in the void. 100%. Right? It's, it's, more, it's more of a native vibe. Well, right. but where I'm from, I'm from like the second city. So it's, it's more of like, uh, it's built, more built up. So more, you probably talk to somebody from like Elutra or... Mm. Rum key, they more so have like a your type of vibe because it's not right. built up at all. Right. You know what I mean? And and the thing is about the Virgin Islands, they have more companies than citizens. I think you have a lot of offshore companies there, like mm. with, with trust funds and stuff like that. Yeah. I yeah. don't know the details, but that's where that's where that's where you would want to. That's what the you, money at. Yeah. You, you, you probably want to know the details as you then, start to keep this bread going up. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm from there, so you know what I mean? So That's easy. And then we have, like, one of the biggest charter fleets in the world. Like, oh, bro. Yeah, like, you in the water sitting down, you see million-dollar ships, like, those big mega yachts in the harbor just chilling. We, come, we coming, man. Yeah, we yeah. coming. For real. We going to do a they, show over there. We were just talking to Coach Gary today about, because we're trying to put on a meet, because I'm telling you, it, it could be a, a nice vibe for track athletes. When... If you had to, because now they have straight flights from Miami to straight to the Virgin Islands. Before you didn't have that. They either stop in Puerto Rico, then you're getting on a plane with like three seats in it, or like four seats in it. <laughs> Just to make them play. Oh, <laughs> Just to make them play. Like, where where like, they I get got asked. fear of turbulence, man. So. <laughs> yeah. Where oh. they get asked you, like, before you get on a plane, how tall are you? How heavy do you weigh? Oh no! <laughs> do you do you mind sitting with the pilot? Listen, oh no! Listen, this, is, this is just to be asking when we trade players. He'd be like, "Hey, bro, we going on with the, with the propellers, like the engine, yeah, the engine yeah, on yeah. the outside." Be and like, you yeah, still get we gonna those... be good. We gonna be good. But, but <laughs> it, it have a different experience. You could eat a flight to St. Thomas. And then you could just catch a ferry and come up. A lot of people more choose that road. Nah, I'm going to get on that little plane, bro. I'm from the Bahamas, mm -hmm. man. I'll be on that ferry, dude. I didn't, I didn't jump the planes, like, flying in the Bahamas all the time. Yeah, like, you know, like, if they got, like, a five-seater, they let somebody sit up front. Right, that's, that's <laughs> it. You know, I got, like, like I have, I, enough time I've yeah, been... Yeah, yeah, you sit in the front of the plane. And enough time I've been at the front. And, and you're watching I, the pilot of my ass, hey, you want to fly a little bit? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, yo, just do this and man. See you <laughs> I'm never going to fly with you, dog. What you mean? You've you been flying with me. What Not you in that situation. I'm going to be thinking that you fly in the plane, Man, dog. Ride together, die together. <laughs> Podcast for life, right? All right, <laughs> there we go, man. <laughs> but yeah, we're trying to um, actually put our trap meet on down there. Like, for real. We had one, I think it was, don't quote me on the year, probably 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. First place were getting paid out just as much as the Diamond Leagues. Ten, what? Ten to, yeah. Just now you missed that. Yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> a Twilight Invitational. We had like um, Kirani James came. Um, what time of year was it? Early? So it probably like May, June. Okay. Oh, no, that's Doha time. Yeah, that's you ain't Doha doing time. that. Oh, you ain't doing that. Oh, maybe. No, I don't think it was 2017. I think it was like probably 2015. Yeah, I was legit at that point. That's about that time I was probably... I actually was injured around probably around that time because that's when the Beijing was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. kicked me out the meat. That's when Dan, <laughs> yeah, that's when Daniel Bailey and then those boys were running and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, the 100 were pretty good. I think the record for that meet was like 10 -0, or maybe mm. 9, 9, 9. Kim Collins was there too, I think. You, yeah, so it was good. Like, I, right I, would, now, yeah, I, would, I would love for, for there to be a lot more meets throughout the islands, like a right. circuit. Right. Uh, uh, throughout the, all the 
the the the major islands. But Jamaica Invitational, that's already a staple. Right. You know, um, I see the Bahamas, we have one. And like for Puerto Rico has one. Mm-hmm. And then uh Grenada has well, just, Grenada had one. I think the I think yeah. the Caribbean should have its own circuit, period. I, I with agree. its own with its own championship. Would you know you would kill the European market with that? You know, I think if the Caribbean it done, if it done properly, <laughs> if it done because all the, lo- all, the all the London, all the London money nobody, is, in the, if, is in the if, Caribbean. If you could get the <laughs> same amount of money at a Diamond League that in the Caribbean, mm-hmm. and you, you go leave. only fly two hours versus eight hours, and then you still got exactly. to go on a seven hour different time schedule or some something like that versus a two hours time schedule, which one are you gonna prefer? Right, and the beach is always gonna be five hundred meters away from you. There somewhere. you go. And it's the true. food, and the food, food gonna be great. Yeah. The food gonna be great. And the vibe gonna be great. The vibe gonna be gonna great. Be great. Right. And your money pa- gonna be great. Yeah. Like everybody would choose a Caribbean any day, personally. I think it really should. I think it really should be a, a circuit, the Caribbean, mm-hmm. with its own Caribbean championship. Think about the number of how athletes that come from the Caribbean, how they actually give to the sport in general. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like so many medals, so many records. You know what I mean? Like you should have your own uh, identity. Right. I, so. I agree. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. Let's make that happen. Me promoters, we just talked about it. Let's let's try to make it happen. We need a, like a ten percent cut of right. that whole find thing. Cause we yeah, find this fee. Talk to Chris. Remember Chris Brown was putting on some meats though too. Oh yeah, man. Chris Brown a coach now, man. He, I think I know. Yeah, he North came North to the toilet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Shout out to Chris, man. That's my that's Fire my man. boy. Yeah, fireman <laughs> Chris Brown. You know what I wanted to ask you, man? <clears throat> this is funny. Twenty twenty two, you changed coaches. Now yeah. you already mentioned that Coach Gary is your coach. He was he was he was on our podcast already. Right. What's weird about your situation, and Coach Gary always tells people, even myself, he doesn't coach hurdles. Right, right. But you train and you got the silver medal this year right. with Coach Gary, but he doesn't coach hurdles. Right. Tell us how you came about to that decision from 2022 moving into 2023. So when I went with Coach Gary, after rip when I called him, he's like, listen, man. I don't know thing about hurdles. <laughs> That's Gary. I, 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 I could trick. I could get you. I could get you good. I could get you fast. But that sounds just like him too. Over the hurdles? Nah, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. Right. So I was like, but Jasmine trains there, and he explained to me Jasmine's situation mm-hmm. with Coach John. Yeah. I reached out to Coach John. Coach John told me, long story short, he didn't know if he would have still be with Coach Gary. He might be doing his own thing. Mm. But if he in the area, he doesn't mind walking with me. So, cool. So, I in my head, I think I have cool. We have a setup. We have a plan. Coach John for hurdles. Coach Gary for, for, workouts. for workouts. Get to Florida. Coach John. Coach John ain't trying to mess with your boy. You understand? For he real? had his own thing going on. Mm. He trying to focus. He had uh, the grass. Yeah, the grass and, and yeah, yeah, Nia. Nia, 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 and then Jazz. Mm-hmm. He got your own thing going on. He ain't really trying to touch me. Maybe he didn't see the vision of the greatness as yet. You understand? So now, time getting closer. Where now, Coach Gary trying to rig up. <laughs> we trying to do some stuff, and it's like, Coach, this ain't it. I cannot contest for the for the a medal with how he is right now. So then, one day I was sleeping. I got up out my sleep. I was like, Oh shit. My dad coached Joey right there in Miami. Ah. Coach Joey Scott. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Coach Joey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I called Joey. I think I was like probably 12, 1 o'clock at night. He answered. I was like, yo, um, you trying to come down to Orlando train me for some hurdles? I got you, bro. I'll be on the, I'll be out there. He came up the next day. And then the next day? The next day. Now, keep in mind, I know Coach Joey Scott from for years. Yeah, Tahisha. Yeah, his true, wife. To his wife. His yeah, wife yeah, 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 runs yeah, yeah, for the yeah, British yeah. Virgin Islands. Yeah. So he used to always be back and forth in the island. So if he were here, he would tell you how he used to see me running around on the track as a little jit, just doing whatever. Play ass him playing and them stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So when I call him, he's like, yeah, bro, bro, I got you. He was there the next day. And we just got to walk in from there. And then... and. So he would come up frequently and then work with you? Yeah, it, it's sometimes twice a week, once a week, or whatever the case is. He come up, he walk with me, and the is rest that is- still the dynamic? You still use Joey and then and Gary or Yeah, 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 yeah. Till this day. Now we just put in the piece together and 
and actually having it formulating in how we can go through with that because last season, like I tell you, it was just like a, a one-hour phone call and then we just start to roll with the punches from there. So like, okay, this day we're going to do this with Coach Joey, this day we're going to do this. So now we're trying to set up our actual program amongst it to make gotcha. it official, whatever the case is. So right. basically you're doing the same thing you did when you was back at home, which is you created your own system and cycle. What I mean is you train at 4.30 a.m., then you was laying asphalt at night. Now you train with one coach, and then you have also found another coach to train you in the other aspect. Of the right, because how my theory with it is, I know a lot of quite a lot of holders going to take this. No, the way I view it, mm -hmm. right, is got Steven Garner, Matt Hudson Smith, and then Cherry was in a group too. Yeah. Michael Cherry. I was like, those boys are consistently running 44 on any day. The closer I could get to those boys, the easier it is to beat them boys. Because yeah. I know all it is in my head is like, I just have to... Keep up. Just keep up <laughs> and just work on my harder technique. You feel me? Yeah. When I was running 47 consistently, my fastest was 45, 45, 8 indoor. How I view it. The Santos, Benjamin... And one whom I ran 44, and they were running 47, 46. So if I were running 45 and I run 44, I mean 47, the closer I get to 44, 9, the closer I get to 46. Yep. So I knew I just needed to get my quarter my training done, and I was never in a professional program. So the program where I was at Clemson, I was a top dog. So it's easy to just lack certain aspects when you're at, top, yeah. at the top. Yeah, no one's keeping you sharp. Right. Day one training with those boys, I was at the back. I was like, ah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this, this is where I need to be. Because now I'm taking this here much, much more, more serious. serious. Much more serious. Like on a different level. Like the mental focus, the, the physical focus I put into this, it was... 150% more. Mm -hmm. I wasn't talking to nobody. I, I wasn't talking no girls. I wasn't partying. I wasn't liming. None of that. Serious. And, and as you see, serious. It, like, it paid off. That, it that, paid that, off. That, that, that discipline of being selfish and denying yourself right. got you to where you are now. Got you your money. Got you your silver medal. Right. Leading right. into my next question. As showman is war home and the Brazilian is Rob Benjamin. He he's he's he competes. He's not a, as much as a showman as them. Does it bother you that you're not mentioned, even though you've been on that steady trail of climbing, that you're not mentioned as one of those big three? It's crazy that you say that, and I I have nobody I would say but myself to blame, because if you really want to mention the big three, all those boys have medals, major medals as well. Olympics and world champs. Yeah. Respectfully, you have to give them them flowers. Even though I was right there, the media never, or the sport never see me as a threat. So why mention him? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. They didn't see me as a threat. But you know how it is, man. I mean, you're in a situation where you have to make your own lane. You there you go. Make your own and I lane. had to create, just like he said, I had mm -hmm. to create that 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 uh that friction of listen, y'all don't forget me, you know. And it's crazy. Even when I did create that friction or start creating the friction, no, because the cre the the friction is there. No, it started. It's still not given. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you an example. I'll show you an example. The world champs. You go on NBC right now on YouTube and you mm -hmm. type in men's 400 holders at world champs. Casting Wahoo win, Ray Benjamin bronze. No mention of Kyra McMaster. Cool. I didn't mention nothing about it. You see what I'm saying? When we beat him in Zurich, when I beat Wahoo in Zurich, the headlines was from NBC, hang, is Wahoo hangover or something like that. Not that Kyra McMaster beat him. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So even till this day, they don't see me as that much of a threat in the big three. That make you mad? Um, <laughs> Mad, I would say no. It just... Motivated another M word. I'll say this much. My, my issue is not with the media. My issue is with... 
I watched those boys for so many years. Respectfully, again, I have no hatred to them. I respect the grind because they work for it. They deserve what all they have. Santos, Wahom, and Benjamin. You can't take that away. Those boys has been running times that the world has never seen consistently. No. For me, is I watch what I could have been or what I am going to be. You are going to be, yes. There you uh, go. Exactly. He, said, he said it before you said it. Yes. That boy said, he coming. Tell yes. them you coming. There tell you go. Tell them you coming. I don't have to tell them. They're going to feel it in the race. Because, <laughs> again, just when you think, I can't even speak too much because um, Matt told me just the other day because he was speaking on this because every day I go to Matt and say, yo, whoop, 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 how I feel. Like, I just let off that energy and Matt say, hey, listen, don't poke the bear. I said, what you mean? Don't give a man a reason. They give you a reason, so don't give them a reason to walk 10 times out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know what I'm I saying? I think you had the best perspective of the situation because you saw the rise and the fall of Samba, right? Right. Watch uh, Warhol rise. Mm -hmm. Watch Benjamin. Watch, you even watched the Brazilian when no one even watching Brazilian. You saw him coming. Right. So the perspective you have actually is, you know not only how to rise, but also how to maintain. So now, to me, you're the most deadliest guy out there on the field. Let me show you this here. The issue I had, you could ask Coach Gary about this, right? Is I used to study so much. Because, again, I understand lanes for so much watching these boys pass me, win races and what's not. In my head, I was like, okay, I have to find a weakness. If you have an up, you have to find the opposition weakness. This man speaking you. my language, boy. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, you said that today in training. Speaking my language. Right? Go ahead. So I could I tell you, just like in training with Coach, I could have tell Coach Benjamin weakness, um, the Santos weakness, and Wahoo weakness. And I could tell him no because everybody knew it. Benjamin didn't trust his training to finish how he wanted to finish. He really didn't. He was, he, he, he saw Wahoo go out so hard, he didn't trust his finish to catch him back. You understand? Wahoo, his tactic is he can take you to the deep end. You understand? He knew he could swim in the deep end, but can you? You understand? No man ever challenge him. If you go back to my races in 2017, 2018, I'll go out in the deep end with that boy. I say, boss, I come from the islands where they throw you off a boat in the deep water until you find your way back to shore, you know? You understand? So going to the deep end is, is not an issue for me. You have to be fit to go in the deep end, though. The Santos, he was the most dangerous dangerous one in my eyes. That boy, 12 step, the whole back stretch. That's a problem in my eyes. Like, shit. <laughs> Everybody else taking four, I mean, 13 steps. You, are, you understand how crazy that is? Right. No, he's a strategist. He, 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 people try to achieve, try to achieve 13 steps. Right. He's he, 12 stepping consistently. Comf comfortably, comfortably. It's not a, a reach for it, you know. He's doing it comfortably. So this is something that he's practiced repetitively and he's do, doing it with his eyes closed, right? When Benjamin said at World Champs that he, how he can change up his race strategy, he can 12 step and then finish with 4, 13. I was like, boy, yeah, you ain't prepared to go in the deep end. I already done say, yeah, you ain't prepared <laughs> to go in the deep end. Not that I ain't cancel him out. Yeah. But I say he's not prepared to go in the deep end. Why would you change up your race strategy in the finals? You ran 46 at the USA's, you know what it takes to run the 46. If he had keep his same strategy, he would have run the same time he ran. That was that pressure. At, is the pressure. You want to change he, at the last minute. He wanted, no, you don't change at the last minute. You Pressure bust pipe. You understand? Now, check this. Wild home, they didn't think I was fit enough to go on the deep end with him. So, when he see me start to go on the deep end with him, he himself switched up his race strategy. That boy switched it in the finals, can solve a little bit on the back stretch. Mm -hmm. And me, I went out there. I pulled up right next to the Santos and I went. You understand? He know I was expecting Wahoo to come with me. Now, while I run in this race, I done strategize throughout the night before me and my coach, me and coach Joey. We done sit on boom, 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 boom. I was, I was actually coaching it too, you know what I mean? So in the semifinals, I watching them split because I want to see how them distributing them energy now. You understand? Because again, learning the race, but at the same time, I wasn't studying it. I just wanted to see. 
Because at that point at World Champs, I was studying myself, where my weakness was and where I could have capitalized. My issue was the always is that damn eight hurdle. But you got to switch? I, I don't know if it's a too far on outside, too close on the inside. I always chip. If you go back to the race, mm -hmm. I had to chip for the eighth hurdle. Broke my shred coming home, but I found it, found back the pattern. You understand? What's your dominant lead leg? Either dominant is left, but I could hold away two on my legs. But if you left, if you left lead leg, you could left lead leg all the way around, right? Unless I get tired. Okay. You see, you have to be fit. Yeah. Like for instance, with Wild Home. Wild Home drops from 13 shreds to 15 shreds after the eighth hurdle. In Olympics, if Benjamin was just a little bit closer, he would have beat him. But he let him get too far. You understand? Yeah. And that race is what traumatized him probably. Because hey, he didn't uh, trust his, his finishing after that to 100%. But he found it back at um, as you know, at the Diamond League Finals. I was like, ah, shit. He found it. <laughs> <laughs> he capitalized on his weakness. Ah, yeah. shit. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I want you to know, man, those boys are going to see this. Yeah. And yeah. That, that might be, it, like, even though you say you ain't trying to get him nothing, this might get oh, him but something. But they know, so. they know. At this point, it's a dog eat dog out there because we talking about them three, but we forgetting Clack. Uh, oh, you see? That boy from Jamaica, he going to be a demon probably. You see what I'm saying? I have mutual respect for them because mm. it's a sport where we are fighting for the number one spot. It was bad enough you had three of them boys. I ain't counting out Samba. He ran 46. He can do it. He can do it again. And then you got Clark to the mix now. So now you got five people that run in right next to each other in that 47 low range. Everybody coming for that number one spot. So now we can come back. That Olympic finals, it probably can come down to mental strength, mm. not physical. I love your generation, Doug. Your generation just, to me, it's just exciting to watch a 100 meter race. Right. So exciting. So intricate. So many, like, people who, who, can, who can win. You know what I mean? That's what makes it exciting. Right. You know? So, right. Man. So, man, be, be, um, anything you want to say to your country back home, Anything else, man? That's that's your camera right there. You want to say anything? Any shout outs or anything? Or, no, man, this good, man. Yeah. <laughs> anything you want to say to your competitors? You just talked about them. Um, nah, nah. I mean, if you realize majority of my action, I rather have it on the on the track. I don't really speak too much on like on the level of I come in for you or whatever the case is. Because again, track and field is a very interesting sport. One year, <laughs> you're at the top of your game and you could put in all this training and then next year. The next year is like, <laughs> what? You pack, what the hell is going on? <laughs> right, right. Track and field is a, is a very interesting sport. And I think that's why I like it. But for the last few years, you would think somebody would have an off year. No. No. Uh, what, how's set up right now? This whole setup because of COVID actually set y'all up for like, Years of greatness. Because you have championship after championship right. after championship, right. back to back. And all you have to do is stay healthy, stay strong. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to have that sharp competition that's always going to lead and bleed into the next year, dog. You know? There you go. You get Within the next, what, five years? Because of five years worth of championships, mm -hmm. back to back to back to back, right? Yeah, the next rest year is 2026. Yeah. So that means... And even then, I read something about World Athletics wanted to put on an event there in 2026 or something like that. Because it's been lucrative for the sport. Yeah. There you go. And lucrative sport. And lucrative they, they for the, it now. Hey, yeah. lucrative for the athletes too, Corey. Exactly. What are you saying? <laughs> I, I, hey, only one opposing thing I have with World Athletics. They need to raise that prize money structure, man. We're doing too much to win $35,000 for our silver. Come on. Yeah, 100%. My coach and therapist cost more than 35000 a year. Yeah. What are you speaking about? Yeah. Raise that bad boy. You need to raise that. Eh? Yeah. Like, come on. 100%. 100%. Being whispers, man. Whispers of uh, change in the sport. So. I hope so. I hope so. But I don't think I would feel that effect. The younger generation, I feel that effect. You understand? Because then when that change actually happened and then it get written like, and they capitalize on it, 
I probably might be on my way out there. No. Someone got to be the pioneer. You know, someone has to set it in motion. Right. So you can be able to look back right. at it. The way your career goes, you might benefit on the back end of it. Right. By becoming a coach or an agent later on in life. Right. You see the difference. Exactly. See the change. Exactly. Yeah, man. Well, shoot, on your episode of Ready, Set, Go, man, we loved having Kyle McMaster from the British Virgin Islands, man. We appreciate your time, man. And I just want to, um, you have anything, Justin? Hey, man, you keep doing your through. Seriously, because you always got a fan right here, dog. I appreciate it. The way you it. break everything down, the way you see things, takes me back to when I was competing. Really intricate. You're taking it serious. Like, see how you, you had those aha moments where a lot of athletes don't have them, where they see them and they, they fear change and be better and become more disciplined. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate it. I mean, I guess what I would say is you, you can't be afraid to change, you know? Especially if you ain't working out how we need to work out. If you need to change to better yourself as an athlete or as a person, do the change. You ain't got nothing to lose at that point. The fact that you feel you have to change to get where you need to go, that's, that in itself should tell you change. Because yeah. if I didn't make the moves that I didn't make mentally and physically and come into Florida, man, I probably might have not had a contract right now. I probably might have not been a silver medalist just because I needed to put myself in an environment to actually see how Olympians and world champions actually think. Matt, Matt is what, Matt and Cherry, those two boys is what really like, twist up my mind and really show me the way. A boy Cherry's a different dog. I, if he didn't get injured... <sighs> yeah, he was on a roll. Definitely. Yo, from what I was seeing... <sighs> man. God. Man. But he and Matt, they really looked out for me as a, as, as a little brother. I ain't gonna even like... They show me stuff. They talk to me. It's like, Cherry had that... Cherry have that dog mentality. Mm -hmm. Like... He showed me like, yo, even if you're scared for a race, don't let a man see. You go in there, you make that man feel be little like you, you understand? Always right? keep that same poker face. Right, keep Fast, that poker face slow, till you finish that healthy, race. Injured, keep that poker face. Though. Right, right. Appreciate it. Until next time. Appreciate you, man. <laughs>